Hi, everybody. Sorry, I forgot to silence my phone. It's three o'clock. I'm still trying to silence my phone. I should have done that before we went live. Okay, we'll try it again. Hi, everyone. It's three o'clock. It's dinner with Nanny Bubby. Welcome, and um, I'm so excited to have you here. I've had kind of a crazy day, and I think that is what this segment is all about, is that sometimes you just have a crazy day. So I got up at 4, I always get up at 4.10, but this morning I got up at 3.50 because I had a 6.30 conference call, Zoom call, and about 30 minutes before that call was supposed to take place, it got postponed by three hours. And it just seemed like everything kind of unraveled from there. So um, I am just kind of um, getting caught up, but I think that's what happens in our day. Hey, Roseanne, hey, Mom, good to see the two of you. I'm just kind of lamenting about what a crazy day it was. And hey, Susie, my, sis my mother and my sister are here. That's really cool. Susie, send me a thumbs up. There we go, there we go, thank you, thank you. When you're cooking for a family, whether you're having a good day or whether you're having a bad day, whether you're tired or whether you're not, you have to kind of pull it together and get it done. And in this case, on these days, because I'm answering this challenge of going live every day at three o'clock to cook for all of you who may be watching, even though there's only three of you. Let me see, yep, four of you now, someone else just popped on. Um, whether or not you're tired or not in the mood, you still need to do it. And um, not only do I now need to do it for my family, but I need to do it for all of you. And that gives me energy and it makes my heart sing. So I really hope that those of you that tune in at three o'clock every day are enjoying it and getting something out of it. Um, and uh, it's meaningful for me to be able to do that for you and certainly to be able to do it for my family. So one thing I just wanna remind you is to get these tiger pumpkins. They're gonna be off the shelf come Friday probably. And on November 22nd, we are doing a pumpkin, oh, doorbell ring. UPS is probably here and now the dog is gonna bark. Also, I forgot to put on my headset, so give me one second while I do that. So now hopefully you can hear me better too and you don't hear the dog as much as I do. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's what going live is all about. Anything can happen and hopefully he'll stop barking soon. So, okay, so today I'm cooking a recipe that comes from the New York Times recipe. Um, I subscribe to that. Hold on, I have to yell at the dog. Don't you have to do that sometimes too? Hey, Biggie, come here. I'm back. <laughs> okay, so um, this is called, and I'm gonna post this recipe after we're done. It's called spicy black bean and sweet potato chili. And I think it sounds fantastic. And so I am going to um, uh, show you exactly what I do and how I'm doing it. I'm making this for the first time. So, um, oh good, Roseanne got her tiger pumpkins. She, Great, where did you get them, Roseanne? Tell us where you got them. Where do they still have them? Tell us where you got them. Okay, so um, so let me see here. I think I opened this. Hold on just a minute. No, I did not get time to undo that. Okay, all right, so here's where we start. It asks for, this is a great vegan recipe. Um, and um, it, can be used for vegans, but it can be used as a side dish. And so for us tonight, even though I would like to go um, vegan more often, I have a six foot two, 187.5 pound husband, and there is no way he's even engaging in the discussion about going vegan. So I will make a vegan side dish that is fantastic. Sometimes I eat more of that. Then I do the meat and everything else. So um, 
How you know everybody in a family eats differently these days. Um, my daughter's vegetarian. My husband is you know keto and high protein. And when I have everybody for dinner, I have to be able to feed everybody who walks in that door. So I like to experiment with different dishes. And it makes me feel good in that whenever I'm entertaining or having family over, I know just what to do. So let's move on. Um, I also wanted to say that one of the last times I went live, I talked to you about grinding black pepper fresh. And this recipe calls for black pepper. I'm completely out. Um, and so I thought I would wait until today's segment to show you how I do it so it will help you. So let's turn this on. Here we go. You can look this recipe up online as I go along if you'd like to. It's called Spicy Black Bean and Sweet Potato Chili. And it is a New York Times recipe. And it, first thing it calls for is a quarter of a cup of coconut oil. So shall I measure that out just to be a good kid? Maybe I will. Always use a liquid measuring cup for liquid and a dry measuring cup for dry so that you get the proper amounts. Roseanne said that she got her tiger pumpkins at Whole Foods on West Charleston. For those of you that live in Las Vegas, you could probably get them at any Whole Foods. And those of you that live anywhere else can probably find them at the Whole Foods where you live. So we're going to heat up that um, coconut oil. And I didn't want you to have to sit through watching me chop a red onion, so or a, a yellow onion, or any onion for that matter. So let me see if I can turn this just a little bit so you can see. So I already chopped my onion and I chopped the garlic just so you didn't have to sit there and watch me chop away. I can already smell, mmm, you know, coconut oil has such a good, good, good scent to it. And now that I can smell it, I know it's warm enough to pop these onions in. So there goes the onions. There we go. all into the pot as we go and I need a spoon so hold on behind me are my wooden spoons and I need to get the salt and the pepper containers okay so we're back okay so while this is cooking let me talk to you about how I do the black pepper so the step one says in a large Dutch oven Warm the oil over medium-high heat, add the onion, season with salt, and cook. And sometimes when you're doing onions, they cook actually better. They sweat better. You can see that and see me here. They sweat better if you put salt on them right as you're cooking them. And I love doing that because they just really, they open up, the aroma gets better. So here we go with the salt on the onions. All right. Now, this is your average old coffee grinder, okay? I never have put coffee in this thing, but I do put these black, whole black peppercorns. There we go. And I'm not going to put too many in right now because I don't want to sit here and grind them for too long and it makes a lot of noise. But it's very simple. I just take this, pulse it a few times. You can hear the sound of it when it changes so you know you've got it all. If you're like doing a filet and you want coarse ground pepper, you can always do this as coarse ground pepper. Very simple, very easy, okay? And then I'm going to take my pepper dish, which I keep right here, and I'm going to dump my fresh pepper right into it. Now, I, keep, I do enough pepper usually to last about two, three weeks, sometimes four. But when I'm entertaining, no matter how long that pepper has been in this little container, I always dump it out and I always grind fresh pepper so I can prepare a dish that is, um, that is got the fresh pepper in it. And you know, I was running kind of so late today that I just realized that I didn't even have the time to put my hair up. Um, which you know is a pet peeve of mine. Nobody needs a long hair in their food. You've got to put your hair up when you're cooking. It's a great sign. People love to see it. They know something great is coming, so you always keep your head up, hair up. Okay, so about five minutes into this, 
we are going to add the garlic. Now, interestingly enough, this recipe calls not only for fresh garlic, it calls for garlic powder, and I've never heard of a recipe that calls for both. But I'm gonna follow this recipe absolutely perfectly. Tom Gallagher, you're watching again, but you did not tell my sister, Heather, that you were watching yesterday. So you need to tell her that I'm using her burner, and yesterday I used her pot, because I asked her if you told her, and she said she had no idea. So make sure you tell Heather you were watching today. Okay, just the family. Oh, Heather is watching. Okay, there you go. There you go, I was just telling Tom that he better tell you that he was watching today. I'm using your burner, let me show you. It's great when my, I've got my mom and two sisters on this call and Roseanne, who's getting to feel like a sister for sure, no doubt about it. Okay, so um, what I was saying is that it calls for two kinds of garlic, fresh garlic and uh, garlic powder, so let's see. And what I do when I'm following the recipe for the very first time, as I do it pretty much like it calls for, and then I adjust it, and at some point down the road, if I like the recipe, it becomes my own. Now, this called for six cloves of garlic, but let me tell you, on a Wednesday night, I'm not cooking anything with six cloves of garlic. Friday night, Saturday night, maybe even Sunday afternoon, I'll do six cloves of garlic in a recipe. I had big cloves, so I did three in this recipe. So see, already I've started to adjust the recipe. I'll tell you one other thing I'm gonna to do to, uh, to address this recipe is it calls for two tablespoons of brown sugar. And again, if I put brown sugar in this recipe, my husband, who probably is watching, will not eat it when he gets home. So I am going to replace it with English toffee flavored stevia. Sounds like a good substitute for me. Whew, those onions are gonna make me start sneezing. Okay, so next thing, add the garlic, cook, stirring, adjust the heat as needed until fragrant. Yep, Whew, I can smell that garlic and I can smell that onion. Okay, add the brown sugar. Let's see, two tablespoons of light brown sugar. So I'm gonna use that stevia instead. English toffee flavor. Doesn't that sound like a good substitute for brown sugar? Okay, ready? Wow, I better just pour it right out of here. I think I might just do one tablespoon. That seems like a lot of sweet to me. Okay, if it needs a little more later, I can always add it, right? Okay, okay. He'll eat stevia, thank goodness. Okay. So there we go, all right. See how you adjust for the people you love in your life. And don't forget to love yourself and adjust for you as well for whatever or however you like to eat. Okay, we're gonna add two teaspoons of ground cumin. Now I only started cooking with cumin just a little while ago. I never heard of that herb and I thought it was very different. I kind of didn't care much for the smell of it because I wasn't familiar with it. And then surprisingly, I suddenly started really like using it in a lot of different things. So when I saw it pop up here, I wasn't unhappy about it. I really like the flavor. It's a surprising flavor when you add it into things. Okay, two, two teaspoons of cumin. Gary Thomas Toller is watching. Hey Gary, how are you? Um, let's see, think the smell coming through the phone. Oh, that's good to hear, my sister said that. <laughs> That. Thanks for saying that, Heather. Yesterday, Debbie Howell was watching. She's got COVID, and I hope she's getting better. You can tell her to tune in now and text her, Heather, if she's home. Okay, um, two teaspoons of the garlic powder. Again, this recipe called for garlic powder and fresh garlic. I've never heard of such a thing, but I'm going to do it as it says, pretty much as it says, and if I want to adjust it in the future, I will. Okay, there's the garlic powder and onion powder and i do not have onion powder so i am going to skip that step i might should i look and shall i turn the phone and let you see me no i'm not going to turn the phone because i don't like you seeing my butt i have an aversion to you seeing my butt on, on camera but i'm going to step out for one minute and I'm gonna look for the onion powder okay let's see
find its usual place. So uh, I have a very alphabetized spice cabinet. Anybody that knows me knows that I am anal to a fault about things. And so I have all my spices. And by the way, speaking of spices, it is a good time of year to replace all your spices. So they probably should be replaced about once a year. They don't stay good forever. And I find that replacing my spices right before the holidays when you're gonna start cooking and doing things is always a good time to do that. Maybe you could do it every two years because it seems like a lot to replace all at one time. But the truth is, is that the spices don't last forever. They lose their potency, if nothing else, over time. So I'm gonna show you that with all those powders in here, this is thickened a little bit. So let me just, because I'm a cameraman, I hope you can see that it's all kind of gotten thicker, very thick, okay? All right, I'm back. So, okay, what's the next thing? We're gonna add orange juice and we're gonna add about, let's see how much orange juice, three quarters of a cup of orange juice, which is about one full orange. And I have this little orange juice thing that I love to use, here it is. So I don't know if you can see this or not. Let me hold this up. Right there, can you see that? I use this, okay, I use this. Let me turn this camera so you can see it better. Listen, being a cook is hard enough, but when you're your own cameraman, it, it <laughs> it's a lot. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. Take this orange juice. I love this, and when you're using navel oranges, you know there's no seeds, so you don't have to worry about it. There we go. Okay. Right, let's get as much juice out of this as we can. I love this, you just dig it in, get all that juice out. Oh my gosh, and it smells so good, you guys. Like my sister said, it's coming through the phone. I hope it's coming through to you guys. And honestly, with the crazy day that I've had, just kind of being here, being in the moment, cooking, smelling the aromas, smelling all of this, it just makes my heart sing. I, there's nothing I love more, even when I'm tired. It brings you to the present moment. And I just wanna say, food is not supposed to be fast. Because many of us have grown up or lived in the um, hey, Trelana, so good to see you joining us today. So happy. I was just saying that so many of us grew up um, in a fast food era, and we got the message that food was supposed to be fast and it was supposed to be easy, but it's not. It's supposed to be slow. You're supposed to be in the moment with it. You're supposed to smell it. You're supposed to appreciate it. You're supposed to enjoy it. You're supposed to take time together with the people you care about and love as a family activity. When have you not thought that the kitchen was the center of a family? It always has been. Okay, back. I had to decline that call. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to Colette. <laughs> and speaking of Colette, Colette is a facialist and she um, uses food to help uh, clear your complexion. And I'm going to be doing an interview with her on November 10th. And I'm doing those interviews in the Gather with Nanny, Mo Gather with Nanny Bubby Facebook page. Um, and she's going to talk about clearing your skin um, with the foods you eat. And so my hope is to do interviews on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and... Um, uh, to do the interviews on Tuesdays and Thursdays and, um, and to do cooking on Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So you want to join Gather with Nanny Bubby so you can watch these interviews. I've got some really great interviews coming up, but they are going to be exclusively, exclusively, exclusively in the Gather with Nanny Bubby Facebook group. So you want to get over there if you haven't already joined because that's where they're going to be. Okay, so we're going to take this orange juice now that we have. Let me be a cameraman again. Okay. And pour in the orange juice. 
Oh, that smells so good with orange juice, with garlic. Delicious. Oh my gosh, I love every minute of this. Okay, now we're gonna add the chipotles. These are chipotles in adobo sauce. I had never heard of such a thing until just a little while ago, but they're just absolutely amazing. Um, and the sauce that they come in is great. Let me see if I can. It's very thick if you can see how they come out of. So again, I am cooking a spicy black bean and sweet potato chili. It's a vegan recipe. It's amazing. Let me get the last one of these out of there. Okay. And I'm gonna put this chipotle and adobo sauce into the mix with the orange juice and the onions and the garlic. This is a great vegan recipe, but tonight I am serving this along with steaks. And you know, my refrigerator is driving me crazy because I'm cooking, not Biggie, it's okay Biggie. Not only am I cooking for you, so I bought a little extra for my refrigerator, but I'm cooking for my family. And now my refrigerator is too full and it's making me crazy. And now I, can't, I get so verklempt about it all, I don't even know what to make. So luckily, I got organized and decided I was gonna cook this recipe for you today on Wednesday. And I have to say that that's the key to cooking for your family, is that if you are organized, you know what you're cooking, it is so easy to come home after a crazy day, which I had today. Things just did not go the way I planned. I was stuck in meetings. I got home late to prepare for all of you. I forgot to even put my, um, my head up um, and, not my head, my hair. And, you know, sometimes everything unravels and that's okay get in the moment, cook like you love it, smell, enjoy. When you do that, it prepares the stomach acids and the stomach juices in your stomach begin to prepare to ingest these foods. You digest them better when you smell them and prepared them. Not when you're in a drive-through and you just eat it out of the bag on the way home. It gives your body no preparation for what you're gonna be eating and what you're gonna be doing. So. I, I really feel strongly about the science of that, is you always want to do what you can, to cook what you can, and to really be there with your family and make the kitchen the center of love, spread love like butter, right? In your kitchen with your family, it's the best thing to do. I love my family, all of them, and many of them are on this call. So um, the Chipotles are in. Well, I'm just gonna tell you this, my mother, who is on this call, always says, wash your cans before you open them. So I just want my mother to know, I washed all of these cans before I opened them. So mom, if you're still here and you're still listening, send me some thumbs up and some um, uh, hearts because I am telling everybody to be sure that they wash their cans. You know, how many people have put their hands on those um, Yes, my mother, it's like the one thing she taught me about cooking. Wash those cans. Okay. Um, I washed them all before we hit the air. Okay, so let me get this top off of this. Okay, there we go. All righty. Now, the sweet potatoes, it says to chop in about quarter inch, uh, let's see, about one inch pieces, and it says to scrub them uh, before. This is the first recipe I've ever seen that says scrub them first, which I think means keep the skin on, which I think is great. Um, but I do more than that. Not only do I scrub them, but I spray them with food grade hydrogen peroxide. You've heard me talk about this. You can find them on the Game, page, Game Changer page on nannybubby.com if you wanna see what I use. You dilute it, make sure you read the directions, you need to dilute it. And um, so these I did before we hit the air. And let's see here, I'm gonna slice these in one inch rounds, I'm guessing. So let me do that. Okay, maybe I should have sliced them before we hit the air. But. 
So I went to Costco today. It was the first time that I had been to Costco since about three weeks before the shutdown in March. And I stopped going to Costco because I heard about these crazy people all buying toilet paper. And honestly, I, it frustrated me so badly. I, I just, I didn't want to go back to Costco. I didn't want to see the crazy people and um, buying toilet paper of all things. I, I think all of us were like, what was that about? Um, so I haven't been to Costco, but I got this $36 um, gift certificate from Costco in the mail for our annual membership. And so today I thought, well, I'd better get over there and use this thing before it expires. So I went to spend my $36, and I was so excited because I was being very, very um, thrifty, which I do not have a reputation for being, I can tell you that. And um, uh, I spent my $36 and 400 other dollars. So that's, <laughs> that's what I did today. Um, I went to Costco, which is another reason I was kind of late today, getting on the air and getting live. Okay, let's chop this one inch pieces of sweet potato. I mean, imagine what is in this, including the stevia, which I think is awesome. Now, my husband may not want to eat much of this tonight, so I might take a little bit over to my daughter and her family because they are big vegans, even though my son-in-law uh, is not necessarily a vegan, but he eats during the middle of the week um, more vegan than not. And I'm very proud of that. But I still think that as long as you're eating organic meats um, that are grass-fed, that you are eating healthy. And you don't necessarily have to be a vegan and you don't have to feel guilty about it. Okay, one on the floor. I always put one on the floor. Okay, so now we've got the sweet potatoes in. And it's calling for two 15-ounce cans of... Um, of black beans, so, and drained. So I already opened these cans and I did wash the tops, Mom, but I'm going to drain them. So let me drain them right over here. There we go, there's one. Are you still with me? How many are here? Quite a lot of people here today. Okay, there's one. So did you guys hear about Colette? about, we're gonna talk about mask me. Many people are getting um, acne from wearing masks all day long that have to work in their masks, which I feel so bad for them about. It's really rough, um, but it just is the way of the world. And we're gonna talk about how to eat for making your um, uh, skin healthy. There's so many people that have skin issues and when you eat for your skin, you'd be amazed at how you can clear it up. And she's gonna give us some really good advice of that, on that. That's going to be, hey, Judy, how are you? Welcome. Um, let's see. Okay, I can't read, cook, and be a cameraman all at the same time, but I can see who pops on, so um, there you go. Now, okay, one can of the crushed, diced, there we go tomatoes. I love the fire roasted. I always use fire roasted. So there we go. Into the pot. Okay. There we go. So now let me just grab this camera and just show you how everything looks in there. Can you see it? I hope you can see that. There we go. Is that looking good? Oh my gosh. Look under the camera here. See me? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So... We're gonna bring this to a simmer. Now this also calls for corn, but I can tell you right now, if I put corn in this recipe, my husband would not eat it. So I did not go forward with the corn. Okay. So we're gonna season this now with two teaspoons of the black pepper that I just ground just a moment ago. So. One, this is gonna add some good heat. Two, 
There we go. And we're gonna take a line and we're gonna use the same little thing because there don't seem to be any seeds in this line. We're gonna use this to get all the juice out of this line. This is really gonna bring out flavor the way that lemon does and lime. Almost the same, but in black beans, it always seems that lime goes better than lemon. However, if you don't have any lime and all you have around the house is lemon, substitute. It's a great substitute. And think about it, we've got the orange juice in here. Oh my God, this looks so good. And we've got the limes in here. Oh my gosh, so good. Again, this recipe is a New York Times recipe. Came across this, oh, maybe I think it came across last week. I use two apps that I save recipes in. One is the Food Network app, which I save all my recipes that I find I love. And you know, I adjust many, many, many of them. Everybody does. Everybody uh, adjusts recipes to fit their family's lifestyle, but they always start with a core recipe, which I do. And the other app that I use is the New York Times. I love their recipes. I love saving their recipes and they are good basis. I'm gonna wash my hands. They are good basis. So um, you saw me yesterday uh, making uh, hot dog mummies and I was doing a test kitchen for the hot dog mummies for uh, being live on Channel 8 um, and uh, that happens on Friday. Any ideas what I can wear as a, um, uh, uh, as a costume, as a Halloween costume, sorry. I was reading Roseanne and my mother are talking to me, but I can't talk back. I can't read, cook, and be a cameraman all at the same time. <laughs> so anyway, but I did see that Roseanne said that she was making uh, my flank steak, which is awesome. Okay, so we're gonna let this simmer, and it says to let it simmer 30 to 45 minutes with the, with the pot on, which I am going to first bring it to a simmer turn it up enough to simmer it, and then I'm gonna turn it down. So there's a couple things that I wanna leave you with. Remember that November 22nd, Sunday at 1 p.m., we are doing the Tiger Pumpkin Cooking Class. Um, Tanya Marie is gonna join me, which is awesome. She has a great cranberry relish that she says is award-winning. There's one other item she's going to cook. I don't remember what it is, but it's a great surprise. Um, we're gonna show you how to turn these cute little tiger pumpkins into soup bowls or any kind of bowl so you can serve butternut squash soup or you can serve creme brulee in it, which is amazing. I think I might have to do both of those, right? Um, and um, it's gonna be loads and loads and loads of fun. So please join us for that. Uh, the other thing is, is I wanna remind you that on uh, Channel 8 at three o'clock this week, we're making um, the hot dog mummies. And so um, that's gonna be really fun on Channel 8. And now that this is coming to a simmer, I wanna remind you that no matter what kind of a day you're having, that if you're organized, you will not get the dinner dreads. You truly will be able to turn around and you'll be able to effortless, effortlessly prepare dinner and um, uh, be able to, to, to not get stressed out. And you'll eat healthier, you'll eat happier, and your family will too. So I just wanna remind you of that, and that's my goal. I wanna really help you bring joy into your kitchen inspire your families with your food, inspire yourself because you can do it. And um, that's my goal. That's what, I'm, what I want to do. It's what I want to give to the world, really, to all of you, to anybody whose hearts I can touch. This is truly what I want to do. Um, even if it's an audience of one, I'm gonna be here every day doing this thing, being here for all of you, even today, I asked myself, why the heck was I doing this? Why did I answer this challenge? But here I am, I have a smile on my face. It made me happy to be here with all of you. Um, I'm not tired, although usually when I hang up, I'll be tired. And I hope that my family enjoys this meal. And I really hope uh, that my daughter and her husband enjoy it when I bring it over to them, because <laughs> I think they will. 
Anyway, okay, while that comes to a simmer, I'm gonna put the top on, one minute. There we go. Oh, and my husband joined us. What does he say here? And you do a wonderful work for all of us. Oh, see, isn't he so sweet? Isn't he so sweet? And Tony Carlson. Hi there, Tony, how are you? Good to see you there. Um, so if you have any questions before we end the call, before we end the Facebook Live, ask a quick question. Oh, this is coming to a simmer, I have a minute. Would you all like to come over here and clean my kitchen up for me afterwards? <laughs> I would like that. Maybe my husband will come home and clean the kitchen. Actually, he does, every night. I always say, you know, if I came home early to make dinner, you can at least clean up at the end. But I always help him. Um, after I go brush my teeth, I come back. Sometimes that takes me too long, but anyway. Just a little insight into the Letitia household. Um, okay, any questions, anybody? Oh, there's still beans in here. Get them in. Oh, they're stuck to the bottom in both cans. Good thing I saw that. Okay, hold on. All right. Hey, did you guys see the Dodgers win last night? How about that? That was very exciting. We've been waiting for that since 1988. We are big Dodger fans in this household. Big Dodger fans. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Bring it to a simmer. No questions. All right, everybody. Love you lots. Give me some thumbs up and some hearts as I say goodbye. Thumbs up and hearts, everybody. I know you're still there. There we go. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'll see you tomorrow at 3 o'clock.